Good afternoon. Welcome to the church that meets here at Malden. We're glad you're back with us tonight. I hope each one of you picked up a bulletin, go over the things that's in the bulletin. Let's remember all of our shut ins that's in the bulletin are sick. You know, we're going to add a few to them. Let's remember Ruth Reynolds and Deborah. They called this morning. They was not able to be out with us. Also, Team Westmoreland. She was in the hospital. I don't know if she found she had or not. Uh, she's got COVID. Her and Peggy both have had COVID. So let's remember them. And Joe and David are home today because they're not feeling well. They, they actually feeling better, but just uh, than they were Friday. So let's kind of hopefully they'll get over it soon. Also, Sue Deal. She's in the Spartanburg Regional Hospital. She uh, had a surgery this morning on her hip where she failed fractured hip. So let's remember her. Also, let's remember Susan Luttrell. Uh, while she's at home recovering her own self. Since she told us this morning, I know I read that card, but she also told us that she wanted to thank everyone for their prayers, cards, and calls that everybody gave and that they called it. Uh, after worship service this evening, personal work groups will be meeting. And also, we have enough men, we'll have a men's business meeting after evening service. Into our service tonight, our uh, song leader be Joel Foster, our lesson by Dennis Strine, and Rusty Maddox is going to have a closing prayer. Begin our worship service with open power. Please bow with me. Our kind, lovely Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day. We thank you for our health and our strength. We thank you for this time we can be here with all the brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can lift up each other in this worship service. Amen. We thank you for your son Jesus as he came to this earth. He lived and died as a man, hung up on that cruel cross, and died for each and every one of us. So, if we do thy will, what's in the word, that we can have a home with thee at the end of our time. I also pray at this time that you'll be with all of our ones of our number that are shut ins, be with the ones that spent in the hospitals, had procedures and surgeries. Be the ones that's at home. Be with all of our sick. Be with the doctors and nurses and their families that take care of them. Hope they return back to their normal health. <clears throat> we also pray at this time that you'll be with Brother Joel as he leads our singing tonight. We'll all lift up our voices of praise unto you. Be with Brother Dennis that has a rec recollection of the things he studied. And we pray that each one also take these things we'll listen attentively. Take these things and apply into our lives. Teach others thy word. I also want to thank you for Dennis and Vicky as they work here with us. Pray that you'll give them many years of service unto you. <clears throat> Pray at this time that you'll always be with our leaders of our nations. Pray that they would look unto you for guidance and that they would want to have peace instead of war all the time. Pray that you'll be with all of our first responders and military police, all the ones that protect us, especially the ones on forward souls, pray that you'll bring them back to their families, pray that you'll always protect them, that they can all come back to their families at the end of the day. We pray at this time for the church here at Malden, the church the world over. We pray that each and everything we say and do here always be according to thy will. We want to thank you for each and everything that you do for us. Also pray at this time to be with us and to guard, guide, direct us and forgive us all many sins. Christ we pray. Amen. Good evening. Apologize the projector just shut off both of uh, the transmitters gone out. I imagine that the computer needs to be restarted, but we don't have time. So we have books. One nine two. One nine two. God moves in a mysterious way, His wonders through. 
speaks to us. One, two, nine. One, two, nine. Mm -hmm. Each step I take, my Savior goes before me, and with his loving hand, he leads the way.
something or a fear you may have, maybe an illness that you've been battling, or maybe some mountain, I don't know, maybe Everest. I don't know if any of us are that adventurous. Conquering many things in our lives can be very difficult. For the most part, we find that the things we would like to conquer are things we had never attempted before. During our gospel meeting, Brother Ferris had talked about Jericho, the archaeological evidence and that kind of sparked the lesson tonight. I got to thinking a lot about it. There were a lot of lessons. This is a lesson in conquering. The great things were happening for Israel at this time. The reason the great things were happening was because they were willing to be ready. They were anxious to get to the places where God had promised them. They had already crossed the Jordan River. And it wasn't just a matter of crossing across some stones because the Jordan River at that moment in time was at flood stage. So a great miracle 
was performed for them to be able to proceed. But during this time after they crossed, God is about to teach them some very important principles as they prepare to face the enemies before them. While following God's plan and agreeing with God, and also living as he intended, what we need to understand is that even if we do those things, it will not exempt us from trouble and opposition. But if we follow God's instructions, it sets us up to be able to conquer whatever it is we want to conquer. Israel is going to learn this firsthand. God is going to ensure that Israel will conquer Jericho. But it's not going to be the way that the people expect. Tonight I'd like us just to see what God does, how he does it, and how Israel must get ready to conquer. Notice what Paul writes in Romans 11, verse 33. He says here, Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable his ways. Though Paul wrote these words, Israel will learn that understanding, that in understanding God's plan, his power and the prize, that he will frequently accomplished what he wants to do by unexpected means. Simply put, God selects his own way. If you'll turn to Joshua chapter 6, we're going to look at the first two verses and we're going to see that at times God's way goes against logic. Jericho was an established and functioning city it was a fortress, two sets of walls. It had an organized army. God's description of that army was mighty men of valor. So logic tells us that in order to fight an army, you need an army. But as we see, God is not obligated to use logic at least human logic. Many times he goes against reason. You look in verses 3 through 5, we'll notice God's instructions to Joshua. You shall march around the city, all the men of war, going round about the city once. Thus you shall do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests will blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast of the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people will shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up every one straight before him. Conventional wisdom in a time of warfare at this time would be that you would lay a siege around the city. That while you have your armies making sure that everyone is buttoned up inside and can't receive fresh supplies, that you take that time then of going out and building siege engines, catapults, towers to be able to go over the walls. But that's not the way God is fighting this battle. It appears that it's going to be an impossible situation. But God's ways does not always have to make common sense. Israel will learn a very valuable lesson that in accomplishing God's plan God selects his own way 
And while God selects his own way, God also <clears throat> determines the results. <clears throat> that is the one thing that I think we can all find interesting with God. God already has the outcome in view. Joshua 6 and verse 2, And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho. What God saw was that the conquering was already established. All that remained was that Israel continued to believe in, to trust in, and to obey God. That's all. This is where it is vital to understand that God's ways do not always match our own logic, our own reasoning, and our own common sense. But also with God's way, the outcome is always in view. But this outcome was not by chance. Joshua 5, uh, 6 and verse 5, it says that the wall of the city will fall down flat. God not only determined what would happen, but he also determined how the event would turn out. It was an outcome in which God was certain. All Israel had to do was follow his instructions. God also sets about his own criteria. Just as with salvation, God has set a pattern that we must follow. In Joshua 5, 6 and verse 5, God says, All the people shall shout. And part of the conquering process is to understand that along with selecting his own way and stating his own outcome, God also sets his own criteria. Specifically, who he wants to participate. This is something totally different than what we find with Gideon and the way he conquered. Gideon had many men with him, but God only selected 300. That's all God needed. But in this part here, God wanted everyone to participate. He needed to use and wanted to use every one. The armed men would go first and then the priest and then all of the people. There was going to be a contribution by every man, woman, and child of Israel. Everyone was going to take part in the action. You know, us Old guys, we like to sit around sometimes and tell war stories. Things that we've done in the past. We sit around and we say, well, do you remember this? Do you remember that? Do you remember what we did here and what we did there? Can you imagine years later when the great-grandchildren are sitting on the knees and, and the great-grandparents are talking about how we conquered Jericho? And then maybe their great aunt, great great aunts or great uncles and, and all the others are right there and said, Yeah, we all all had a hand in it. God wanted everyone to benefit what he did and how he did it. And this is exactly what God wants for us. This is how we conquer. You know, sometimes the things that we want to conquer in life is too large for just ourselves alone. Sometimes it takes the participation of many in order to be able to conquer. Whether it is a vice that we have and we need the assistance of those around us, of our loved ones, to be able to conquer that vice. Maybe that's why it's so important that we all gather together here whenever we get a chance to assemble. Because we may be conquering, trying to conquer the world, but we can't do it alone. We need the help of others. 
verses 20 and 21 of Joshua chapter 6. So the people shouted, and the trumpets were blown. And as soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout. The wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. And they devoted all in the city, both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys with the edge of the sword. You see what it took to conquer. Every single one gave themselves completely to God's plan by following his instructions, by cooperating with him in approaching Jericho in the way God told them to. When they conquered this city, the promised land was opened to them. Fear of Israel spread across the land. And you can imagine the people excited with the anticipation of continued victories. God desires that we conquer, that we experience victories, that we overcome the obstacles we face. by making us accomplish his plans in our own lives. God's word is our perfect guide. We can deal with any of the battles of life we have by his word. But we have to follow his instructions. Can you imagine what would have happened if the people got too antsy, too excited, and did everything God wanted them to do on the seventh day, on the sixth day. What if they substituted harps for trumpets? God has laid out his plan for man to be able to triumph. Our conquering, our victory will be that crown of life. And the only thing that God will accept is that gospel plan. You know, back when the children of Israel were in captivity in Egypt, And they got down to the last plague. And God gave them the instructions on what they had to do. They had to clean the houses of all leaven. They had to prepare a lamb without blemish. The food had to be totally consumed, none thrown out. And the blood had to be placed on the lintels around the door. Omit one of those things and you lost your firstborn. The same holds true with salvation today. We can pick and choose what it is we want to obey. We can believe and believe that we are saved, but we'll fall short. We can repent and stop there and we'll fall short. We can confess Christ and stop there and fall short. When we're baptized into the Lord, we fulfill the grace that was offered. And salvation is ours. But we can still come up short. If we don't do all that we can to conquer what it is in this world that holds us back and keeps us from living that faithful Christian life.
when we put all these things together in God's plan, when we do our very best to obey everything God has, a crown of life is ours. And we will have comfort. If we leave one thing out, one thing, there is no triumph and there is no victory. If you are not a child of God, we want to give you that opportunity this morning or this evening. Leave one thing out, and we're lost forever. <clears throat> Don't leave it out. Through God's grace, he has given us this plan. <coughs> he has given us a way to eternal life. All we have to do is follow the same things that the children of Israel did and obey God to the very last. If there's anyone that has a need to see him, won't you come as together we stand and we sit? When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all dismissed with prayer. Oh, one other thing. Next Sunday's fellowship meal. <laughs> Almost forgot that. Did forget it this morning. I was reminded, but by then everybody was leaving and my voice wasn't loud enough to get there. So please remember that next week. This time we'll be dismissed with prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day. We're thankful for the many blessings we enjoy, we enjoy each and every day. May we ever be grateful for these things. Be satisfied and pleased for all that we do have. So no, no bless beyond measure. We're thankful for the opportunity we've had to come together and worship Thee today. We pray that all that's been said and done has been pleasing to Thee. We can gain much by simply being here. We pray that you continue to be with those that we know of that are in need of our prayers, the ones that are sick, the ones that are 
are on the men that are close to being back with us, the ones that's just recently had surgeries, the ones that may be traveling or working, just pray to be with all these folks. Be the ones that be with the ones that may be struggling in life. Just those folks are in need of our prayers as well. Be with the, the ones that end all these deep ones. We pray that you continue to be with our our country. Be with the folks that protect us each and every day. We're thankful for them for what they mean for us. Continue to be with our, our children as we go through this evil world that seems at this time. We pray that we can just be that example for them. Pray that we can insulate them. Much good can come from them. Continue to be with us as we leave this place and begin a new work week. Just keep us safe. We pray that you forgive us when we fail you. Bring us back the next point in time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.